Welcome to today's video. Today is a very special day. Uh, we're gonna talk about a very special camera that Fujifilm loaned to me, the GFX 100. Yes, it's a 100 megapixel medium format mirrorless camera. It uses the GF lens system. It costs $6,000. Before we go too much further, drop a comment and let me know what camera you're shooting right now. It doesn't have to be Fuji, doesn't have to be a medium format. Let me know right now. Back to the video. If you are interested in this camera or just curious about it, I think you should stick around. I have about 10 uh, pros and about four cons, and so I'm gonna take my time. Having time with this camera is like going to a special event. I wouldn't tell my friend about a special event and just say, it was good, it was bad, it was all right. A very special event, I would take a moment. So let's have a moment with the GFX 100S. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. All right, today we have back the International Box of Mystery, and I have um, the pros that I'm gonna pull out of here and talk about, as well as uh, a list of four cons. And we're gonna talk about use, performance, and price, which is my uh, framework for deciding about camera gear. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, is this camera for you? So one of the things that you should know about the, the GFX 100S is it has all the typical Fujifilm film simulations that you have come to expect on Fuji cameras, so it's no different there. And it has Nostalgic Neg, which is a new one that they released with this camera, and I don't think it's available on any other camera. Maybe the GFX 50, 2S, I'll have to look at that. So the film simulations are there, so like I love classic chrome and, and those, all of those are there. Next uh, benefit, the build quality. This camera, um, I'm not gonna use the word tank. Oops, I just did. Uh, it's very, very solid. The flip out screen feels uh, very, very uh, rugged. Everything is weather sealed. The build quality is great. Now that also gets into a little bit about weight. Um, and I'm just gonna say right off the top of the bat, weight is not an issue. I carried this all uh, around Santa Barbara. We went to the, the mission. We were with uh, my son and his girlfriend and my wife. Uh, we were um, walking around, not hiking exactly, but walking around uh, for a couple hours and I just carried it. I didn't have strap. I didn't have a neck strap or wrist strap and uh, it was fine. So weight is not an issue. The build quality is uh, stupendous. It's great. It's like it's comparable to a 5D Mark IV. It kind of feels that See, the 5D Mark IV feels chunky to me, and this has better ergonomics, so it was, it was interesting, but it, it feels like that, so for what it's worth. It's not like the Canon R5 or the R, which feel like small cameras. Uh, this is a big camera. Next benefit, the X Processor 4. Now, this is what's interesting. This is the same sensor that's in the camera I'm filming on, the Fuji X-T4, which is I bought, uh, there's a $200 rebate, and I bought this one for $14.99. As well as Payboo, the BNH uh, credit card, allows you to select no tax. So I got another $150 off of that. So I got a really good deal on the X-T4. Same sensor as the GFX 100S, which is a $6,000 camera. So obviously, I feel like I've chosen this camera because I love the way the images look, Fuji thinks the same, and so having that same sensor uh, was great. It's an easy transition. Things look the way I expect them to look. You do wonder though, in a camera that uh, expensive, if there is something better they could uh, dig up in terms of the sensor, uh, but it is a backside illuminated CMOS uh, uh, 100 megapixel medium format sensor. All right, next uh, topic. Now this one is speed, and I know it's a medium format camera. I don't typically uh, shoot in medium format. I don't have a medium format film camera. I have very little to compare, compare to. However, I was shocked because I did use it for some street photography, and it performed pretty well. So speed is actually gonna show up later uh, when we talk about cons, but I will say that for what I was doing, and that's something we're gonna talk about later is, is the use, what are you using for? I was impressed with this medium format uh, camera speed. All right, and actually I think I did borrow from Fullerton Cameras a Pentax digital 
medium format camera and that one was felt very slow um, unhappily slow this one doesn't you almost don't know it uh, but we'll talk about the speed issues all right here we go the flip out screen now what's interesting about this it's a 3.2 inch two-way flip out so it flips out like this and then the back of the camera also opens that way and I found it, even though it was awkward for me at the beginning, I found that it was effective and I could shoot anything I wanted with it. There were no, um, no downsides to that. It was well designed, it was rugged, it did take a little bit of getting used to, but I thought the flip out screen was a win. Um, I didn't film myself, so I, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about video, but I didn't film myself with it, so um, I, I don't have any commentary on whether it's a good vlogging camera. But don't spend $6,000 on a medium format mirrorless for a vlogging camera. Please don't. Okay, next. All right, 102 megapixel resolution. So this ties into other areas, size of the files, which we're going to talk, talk about, but mostly right here I want to talk about the benefit of having that kind of resolution is you really capture um, a very, I'm trying to not use the words that are going to come up later, the way you're able to look into the areas of your, um, your composition and your image and see just the quality, um, also the size, how you're able to zoom in and see maybe if you're gonna crop, uh, it's absolutely immense. I'll give you an example. I did a little bit of night photography. I went out in Pomona. There's a couple of cool um, locations with neon lights and I had a cine still film simulation, film recipe programmed into it and I wanted to capture these scenes. I was not able to get right in front of the store. There's people out front. I wanted to shot uh, from uh, across the street, basically. Perfect would have been the center divider, but the center divider was, there's a busy street, I couldn't get there. So I'm across the street and I'm able to shoot the front too far away, but on the R5, I couldn't crop in the same. Uh, even though that's a 45 megapixel camera, I wouldn't have been able to have that power from that 102 uh, compared to the 102 megapixel resolution. I, I will say this is probably the X factor. Every image I looked at had some, I'll say unusual, though that's not the best word, had some intriguing beauty to it because of the, the depth and the detail. Uh, of that uh, that sensor, that uh, that resolution that it rendered, it's uh, the images are beautiful to look at. Now that's the sensor, the processor too, but it's also the resolution. Uh, Fujis are they're great cameras, so um, I'm I'm a fan, obviously. All right, now here is autofocus. What was shocking and surprising to me were a couple things. One, I'm used to the Canon R5, and when I think of autofocus, I think of eye tracking. And when I think of the Canon R5 eye tracking, I'm looking for a green box around the lead eye, the eye closest to the camera. Um, it's such an amazing feature. Um, I'm very spoiled by it. But what I found is the uh, GFX 100S would put a box around the face, and it would be a, appear to be face tracking and I wouldn't, rarely, rarely I would see the box around the eye. And I just thought that it had not locked on. Like I had a lens that was a 1.7 uh, F aperture. And um, I convinced myself that because it was face tracking, not eye tracking, I convinced myself it was not locked onto the eye. Every single image was razor sharp on the eyeball. So even though the Fuji system wasn't outwardly expressing itself to be in focus the same way I'm used to on the Canon R5, the autofocus was amazing. Now, I, I wasn't doing anything like events. We were all doing portraits and, and some just sort of walk around shots, pretty low key uh, in terms of speed. Uh, and we'll talk about speed, even though speed of the camera to you know operate uh, was good for some light street photography. Speed is an issue that we'll talk about when we get to the cons or the, the uses for this camera. Okay, I'm having a great time. This camera was such a blessing to be able to have and to hold. They sent me three lenses and uh, make, I'll just wait on that. We're gonna get into that later. All right, the size. I've already talked about this a little bit. The size of the camera, it's not overly heavy for me. Um, it wasn't, um, 
something that I thought was uh, an obstruction to using it. It was easy to carry around. I think the ergonomics definitely helped with that. It doesn't have the battery grip like the GFX 100 uh, where the batter, uh, body is taller. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit at the end about comparing this to the GFX 100 which is the previous model and uh, so the size was totally and utterly manageable. Matter of fact, um, I have this backpack from, I think it's called Brevity, it's pretty, you can see this advertised on Instagram a lot. <coughs> uh, right here had the GFX uh, 100S here with the 63 millimeter lens and then I had the 100, uh, <coughs> excuse me, 110 millimeter lens here and then I had the, uh, what was the other one they gave me, I think it was the 80. Uh, and so all right here I had uh, about $10,000 of camera gear, uh, the body and, and the three lenses. So it was very, very um, small and easy to carry on. It had all the space up here. Now, when I walked around with it in Santa Barbara, I didn't uh, take the backpack. I just had the camera and the one lens. So for the most part. All right, so here we go. What's another thing? Okay, so the medium format sensor, something just to put in there for you to think about is, it's 1.7 times the size of a full frame sensor. The pixels are larger than a full frame camera. Yeah, so if you had a full frame camera that's 100 megapixels, these pixels would be larger because the sensor is larger. Um, so the sensitivity to light is, is remarkable. Um, and then also I think that, so it helps uh, performance in low light. So there, there's just something I can't quite put my finger on it, but <laughs> the other thing is um, I love to take off the lens and just look at the sensor. It's a little like staring into the eye of God. I mean, or the eye of the tornado or something. You just become transfixed by the size of the sensor. Um, and I know, I probably can't quantify this, but the sensitivity to light does create some magical um, images. And I'm not talking about like twilight, it captured details and shadows, though that was a question. I think uh, Nick Carver asked me on Instagram, he'd be interested in how much details it uh, pulls out of the shadows. I took a picture of the Sweet O Donut Shop that actually Nick uh, uh, photographed uh, and talked about on his channel. It's in Fullerton by my job. and. I thought the shadow recovery was not that great. That's my personal, I didn't do some big extensive tests, but in that shot it was, the sun was going down behind the donut shop and I wanted the colors in the sky so the, the donut shop is underexposed and I didn't feel like the image held, to great, held together great when I boosted the shadows. The medium format sensor is magical. Okay, last three uh, pros here. Here we go. Lenses, all right, so I mentioned the 110 millimeter. Uh, I mentioned the 63 and I mentioned the 80, uh, I think a 1.7. Obviously the, the 80 and the 110 have this great luscious bokeh separation from the background. The surprising lens to me was the 63 millimeter. It's a f2.8. Um, I usually prefer on the primes to have something a little bit brighter. Uh, if I can, I generally don't gravitate towards uh, f2.8 lenses. Uh, I prefer 1.8, 1.4, things like that. However, that 63 millimeter lens, I kept it on probably the, the longest out of any, probably more shots with that than the other two combined. Um, it, and one thing, it was lighter, so that was party, uh, part of the problem, uh, not part of the problem, that's part of the reason. Uh, but it was just amazing, uh, the lens, the quality of the images. And then, um, so you have to think that millimeter on a medium format is actually a little bit smaller. So it's more like a 50, I think. I'll try to look out and put up on the screen the exact uh, conversion, but it's not as uh, zoomed in as a 63. All right, two more. Last, uh, second last pro is stabilization. It has IBIS. It has six stops of stabilization and uh, it's great. It's great because it's a big camera. It's got a big sensor and uh, so the stabilization helps you get shots that are not blurry. I personally, uh, sometimes I, I find that I take blurry shots because my shutter speed is too low. I personally did not encounter that on this camera. I think that the IBIS was great. I did not use it for video. I did. I took a, a record a couple of video clips, but I didn't do any testing. I know that it would be a benefit, but um, I didn't do any testing on that. But it has IBIS. 
All right, now uh, last benefit or last pro is details and sharpness. Every image was attack sharp, really focused on the point that I wanted, and I just felt that the 100 mega, 102 megapixel um, resolution loaned itself to the excellent lenses that were uh, so great at capturing this subject. And so it's kind of like the medium format sensor, the megapixel resolution, the lenses all give you this incredible detail and sharpness that is, your images look gorgeous because where it's out of focus it's very soft <clears throat> almost like a painting I would say and then the, the subject just pops off the background in a rich lush way that I, I can just say the detail uh, <clears throat> and um, the detail and the sharpness in contrast to the bokeh are, it's it's kind of out of this world. Uh, I would definitely, if you have a chance to use this camera, do. Uh, I feel like it changed my life, it opened my eyes. And now we're getting to the part about the cons and would I recommend this camera. So uh, first of all, let's talk about um, the GFX 100S compared to the 100. So uh, it's lighter than its predecessor, it's more compact, it has better ergonomics, has IBIS and the price cut. The last one was 9,999, this one's 5,999. So if Fuji can make a better, lighter, smaller camera <clears throat> and cut the price $4,000, I say, well done. That's incredible. Hats off to you, Fuji. So now let's talk about the cons before I tell you if I recommend it. So here are some things that I was thinking about that were not stellar, not totally impressive. Um, Continuous shooting five frames per second. Now I, I was doing some research earlier and I was looking at uh, an LA Times photographer that was uh, doing photography in Washington DC. Um, and so I was looking up his gear and I actually stumbled on an article he wrote on his own blog, but it was from like 2006, like 14, 15 years ago. And he was talking about like the 1DX and he was saying that it was five frames per second so five frames per second, even though this is medium format, that's pretty substandard, I would say. Uh, the Fuji X-T4 has 30 frames per second. Uh, it's incredible. Others are 12, the EOS R is like 12. So uh, that is not impressive. Here's the thing, it has two card slots. I thought that the camera, given the size of the files and the things uh, of that nature, uh, the, the, the resolution it's producing, I think they should have put a CF Express card in there. CF Express is something the Canon R5 has. I wasn't a fan, but now that I have it, those files transfer so fast, it's a blessing. The GFX 100S should, should have that. The other thing is, uh, third con, 200 megabyte RAW files. You take one RAW file, that's 200 megabytes. You take five, that's a gig. It's unbelievable. It almost makes the camera unusable. If I were to use it at a, uh, not even a wedding, just a portrait or family shoot with 300 pictures, that's 12 terabytes or something like that. Um, it just doesn't make sense. Okay, and the video specs, the only thing I'm gonna talk about, it maxes out at 4K 30, internal 420 recording and that's just not okay like <laughs> do, do, do you have a beast of a camera beast of a sensor do 4k 60 do 422 internal um so th those are uh those are some cons and i would say it is not for sports not for events and that's what we're going to talk about next in in uh, who is this for and the use and it's not really for street photography if you're doing any sort of fast moving subjects which the streets are fast. I feel like that's a quote from a movie somewhere. Probably faster than Fur Furious. All right, use. Here's what I would use it for. Portraits, out of this world, magical, especially fine arts portraiture. If you're looking into that, this camera cannot, I would submit, be beat. Landscapes, I would say if you're a landscape photographer, you might look at this, it could produce incredible resolution, incredible detail, incredible sharpness, magical light it's for you and uh travel i think i felt like the size of it was reasonable i would uh think about this as a travel camera if you go to a foreign country somewhere you're not from you're never going to get back there again you could have some amazing amazing images all right and that leads us down to 
The price, $6,000. If I had $6,000, would I buy this camera? Yes, if I was doing portraits or landscapes or travel, and those were all paying me money in the amount of something like 10 times the price. So if I was making $60,000 as a travel photographer, uh, portrait photographer, landscape photographer, I probably would invest in a $6,000 camera. That's just my simple math. Um, let me know what you think. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think about the GFX 100S. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share this video, leave me a comment.